So we're going to talk about accuracy and precision. And the first way that we look at it is looking at it from the bullseye perspective because it gives you kind of a good visual aid in thinking about the data sets. So looking up here, the one in the center we would say is precise and accurate because all of them, all of the dots are hitting the target value and they're all hitting the same place on the target. So over here, there, well in this case there's very minimal errors because you're getting the right value, your measuring tools also getting data points very close together. If you're looking at this target over here, the person seems to be hitting the same spot on the target but not actually hitting the target in the center. If you wanted the full points, the maximum points, you would want to hit the target here in the center. But this person's aim might be off, but at least their, their aim is off the same amount every single time, right? So up here, hitting the same spot each time, but being off from the target value means you're precise and not accurate, okay? You're all over the place, not hitting the same spot or the target value. You're not precise or accurate. And you have random errors. Now, systematic errors like this one where you're precise but not accurate, that's either a, you know, like the human is measuring incorrectly every single time the same way, or the tool that you're using is not calibrated properly, like the balance. For some reason the balance is way off, and it's way off every time. So that's what we talk about when we're talking about systematic errors. Random errors <coughs> have no idea exactly if it's just a human error or the, uh, both the tool and the human making random measurements that don't make sense. Yes? There's such a thing as not precise but accurate. Yes. And we're going to look at one of those examples there okay, in just a moment. So this is kind of the concept using the visual aid with the uh, targets, explaining the words accuracy and precision, and now we're going to actually apply them to data sets. So before we get to the percent error equation, which you do need to memorize along with the density equation or the triangle for density, let's look at a couple data sets here and apply these words. Accuracy refers to how close the measurement is to the true, accepted, or target value, sometimes called the actual value. Those words are all used interchangeably when describing accuracy. Now, like I was saying, the precision refers to the reproducibility of the series of measurements. How close are the measurements to each other? Like, are you hitting that same spot on the target each time? Are you getting the same measurements every single time? So if we're looking at this particular example problem number one, the following measurements were made to determine the density of the material whose value was, according to the handbook of chemistry and physics, supposed to be right here, 1.24 grams per milliliter. So this is going to be our target value, our accepted value, our true value or our actual value, the one that we're trying to get. Now, if we look at our data set over here, we have 1.20 grams per milliliter for trial one, 1.22 for uh, trial two, and 1.22 for trial three. Now, before I can really analyze my accuracy, what should I do first with my three trials? What do you do with uh, data sets like that when you have trials? <coughs> what did you do with data sets last year when you had trials? Huh? Come on, be brave. Well, in this case, we're not really looking at variables, but we, we measured and we got these values. We need to do what with all three sets of our data here? We need to have a average, a representative number to represent the entire data set. 
Okay, I know you guys knew this. Nobody wanted to speak up, but there you go. You need to take an average. 1.20 plus 1.22 plus 1.22 over what? 3. Okay. Yes, we still average in chemistry. Just like you do in math, just like you do in bio, we still average. And what do we get for our average here? All right, 1.21. Each one of these measured values has three significant figures, so we're going to leave it at three. Don't forget your unit, grams per milliliter. We don't want any naked units, I mean naked numbers without units. We want them to have units on them. All right, so now I have a general number to compare here. So if I look, I can take a look here and compare it to my 1.24 actual number. My 1.21 was the measured number by the students in the lab. Would we say that that is accurate or not accurate? Are they close numbers? 1.21, 1.24? Yes, they're close numbers, so we would say it is, data is accurate. The data is accurate. You only really have two options, either you're accurate or you're inaccurate, or not accurate. Make a general comment about the precision of the results. Now for precision, we don't care about this actual value over here. We don't need to look, worry about that part. What we need to look at is our data set over here. Looking at our three numbers, are those three numbers close together? Are they pretty much the same measurement repeating over and over again? Yes. So the data here is going to be either precise or not precise. What would you say? Data is is precise. Data is precise. Okay. Now, now that we have a concept of accuracy and precision, we can look at our percent error equation down here. We generally give it kind of, especially in regular chemistry, a 5% rule. If your uh, percent error is less than 5%, you would say that you're pretty accurate. But here's the overall equation. The actual value, that's the one from like the textbook or the given information. The measured value is the student's measurement from the lab. Student's data from the lab. Okay, actual minus measured over actual. Now we have these absolute value bars here. What do absolute value bars do to, to any kind of mathematical equation? Make it positive, very good. We put those in there to help you understand that percent error is a, an amount that you're off. How far off are you from the target value? Does it matter if you're off in the negative direction or off in the positive direction? No, we just want to know how far off you are. Not which direction we're off in. We want to know how far off you are. So if you get a negative percent error, you would need to make it positive. And then, of course, because it is a percent, we need to lastly multiply by 100. The measured value is the number you got from collecting the data, okay? High percent error, the data is not accurate. So usually we say less than 5%. You could pretty much decide that it is accurate. Less than 5% error would be pretty accurate. So let's go ahead and calculate the percent error for this example. And here, just like before, you're going to use your average 
as your measure value, the one that the student got. So we have 1.24 minus our 1.21 over 1.24, the actual. Don't forget your absolute value bars times 100. And since all of our digits here have, or all of our measured values have three digits, we're just going to keep three at the end here. So what do you get for your percent error? What? 2.4, there you go. 2.42%. So keeping the three digits, you round the two at the end there. It was a one, you rounded up to a two. So that's one example. Let's take a look at a different data set and see what it gives us. So what you're going to see on the quiz is a data set similar like this, and you're going to need to be able to determine if it's accurate, determine if it's precise, calculate the percent error, okay, any of these things you would need to be able to do. So before I do anything, what should I do with my data set up there? Find the average. Very good. So go ahead and find your average. <clears throat> looking here, in terms of accuracy, what is our accepted value for this data set? 1.15. Our average value was 1.12. What would you say about the accuracy? The data is accurate. at our data set here for precision, looking at our three measurements. Are the three <coughs> measurements close to each other? No, so the data is, is not precise. The data is not precise in this case because those three data points are not even close to being with, uh, in the same range of each other. Now, in this particular case, too, you can still kind of tell if you're looking here, 1.21 is very close to 1.15 because they're small numbers and they're easy to see. The numbers are bigger. Sometimes it's harder to tell whether you are accurate or not. So calculating the percent error is helpful so you can see are you above five percent or below five percent but looking up here 1.15 minus 1.12 over 1.15 don't forget your absolute values times 100 that's going to give you your percent error how far off were there was their data here what did we get Calculate it. Come on, guys. Hmm? 2.61. Good. That's what I got. So that definitely still falls within our 5% range. How about looking at number 3? Number three is a little bit more difficult because you have to figure out which number is the 50 or the 46.2. Which number is your actual true value? Which number is the measured value? So you have to kind of read the scenario to figure out which one you're dealing with. So out of those two numbers, take a moment to read it. Which one is going to be the measured value? The one that the student uh, collected. 
And how do you know that? Okay. If you read carefully, you will see the chloride solution you got, meaning the student got, is the 46. So this one's going to be your measured value. The expected or the actual value that you were supposed to get would be over here. Pi the 50. Now when you do this subtraction and you calculate the percent error, let's take a look what it does to the number here. What is your percentage when you calculate the percent error here? general rule, would we declare that to be accurate? No, so we wouldn't say this one was accurate. We would say inaccurate, if you wanted to be grammatically correct. Okay? So what you're going to do now is look at finishing up your lab and then working the other problems on the other side of the worksheet. Now let's talk about the lab real quick. 